Hi Eric, another tour, and unfortunately another time in Italy. We're glad to see you again. Last year you came back to Italy and Europe after nine years. What are your impression of Italian fans? Italian fans are very, very passionate. And uh, look, at one thing that's great is KISS fans are very great everywhere in the world because they all speak the same language, which is KISS. Yeah. And that's the beauty and the unique thing about KISS. But sometimes you go to some countries... And the difference, I notice mostly in like Latin countries, South America, Italy, Spain, sometimes the people are uh, less shy, more open to being, expressing their emotions to the band. So this is the one thing that's uh, more special about a place like Italy. Oh, yeah. The fans are not very passionate. And they're not afraid to let you know. And this is great. Oh, yes. So it will be a lot of beautiful exchange between the band and the fans tonight, I hope. And I think they're going to really like the show. Okay. And uh, after so many rumors about Sonic Boom over Europe as the last tour, we have read that in 2011 there will be another Kiss album. So Kiss is still alive and we're still going to see them live, fortunately. I hope so. Um, I never heard any rumors about Sonic Boom over Europe okay. being the last tour. Nobody told me that. So that's something maybe you or somebody else make up this idea. But... Uh, Paul has said that he would like to do another record. So I think, you know, we're going to do another tour in the U.S. after Europe, and then, then I'm sure we'll have a break. You know, maybe there will be some shows here and there. You know, maybe, maybe we'll go to Australia or maybe we'll go to Japan or Far East for a short run. Uh, but I think we'll probably start either the end of the year or maybe the first of the year on a new record, and then maybe by next summer we'll have another new record out in 20, 2011, I hope. Right. Uh, I think... It, it, I think that it should be no problem for KISS to make another record and another really great record. And I think actually even greater because now this band with Gene, Paul, Tommy, and myself, and we've been together now, this lineup for seven years. Now we've gone in and made a record together. Um, I think you know we've done a lot of shows. The band has a real good comfort zone, a good chemistry. And now that we know that we can make a great record, I think we can make even greater record. I, I really believe. And I think that's why Paul wants to do it. I think he believes the same thing. He feels like, wow, this is just the beginning of another era. Another era. Another era. Let's, uh, let's see where we can take this to another level. I, may, I think so. Well, we hope that, actually. How do you feel after a long tour and go back home? Well, of course, I get very tired and exhausted because it's... Let me tell you, being in KISS, is, uh, it's a great thing. It's a great job. I love my work. But it's also, with, with that great job and all the good times, there's a lot of responsibility. So we have a lot, there's a lot of work. It's very hard work to be on tour. Uh, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's much more than people realize. They see us on stage, they go, oh, this must be great. But there's a lot of work every day going into being in KISS and, and the responsibility to each other, to the band, to the fans. I mean, there's, you know, and we all take the job very seriously. And I think that's why this group of people, Gene, Paul, Tommy, and myself, I think that's why it's a really good lineup. It's because we all uh, we all understand what it takes to uh, to keep it going and be successful at it. It's not easy being in a band. It's not. <laughs> no, it's a lot. You have you have many different personalities, and but uh, everybody seems pretty settled, and I think that's great. Let's say, how do you see the rock music scene nowadays? An example in spreading web radios, as we are. Everywhere, web, web magazine, everything on web. And I saw you selling uh, like uh, uh, a key for the concert, like, uh, how can I say? Uh, USB key. USB key with the old gig on it. Yeah, the band sells that. Yes, yes, at the show, right. Yeah, the show. The instant live. Yes, that's You the can word. buy the show and take home a souvenir package with a little USB with a KISS logo That's and you I can mean. download that then if you want you can burn your own CD of the show to play in your car but you'll have that souvenir always um, of your experience I think it's a great thing and I the, guess. because then you go home you just saw the concert and you can listen to that concert that you saw in your city your own individual concert anytime you want which is beautiful I guess it's great I think it's so you open like uh, for the web thing and the whole idea is people here look at People are going to record the show and bootleg it anyways. So why do you want some shitty copy? It sounds bad. You're right. Why, 
Why not have something that's a professional product, authorized by the band, it's going to sound better, and you have a great souvenir in the packaging as well. You can't beat it. It's a great thing. Hey, the music business has changed. There's not really a record company anymore. There's not really record shops like there no. used to be. So you have to find new ways to market the band. And the real way for bands to go out and earn and make a living is to go out on tour. And then you have to find ways while you're on tour of ways to, since you're not getting record sales, which means they don't get publishing money and all this kind of things. So you have to replace that another way. So you do it through merchandise and meet and greet package and recording. These are other ways to supplement, as we say, something that was taken away. Perfect. Watching the new situation in today's music, what do you what do you would like to suggest to the new band that are moving the first step into rock and roll music generally? Well, I don't even know what to begin to tell you because you know <laughs> I'm 52 years old. So when yeah, I started, yeah. um, when I started, you know, playing in bands, you know, touring, I started touring 1984, so 26 years ago. You know, that was a big time for metal, hard rock, hair metal bands, all this kind of thing. And that was like, that was the prime time. So I got into the business at a very good time. But um, I started, you know, uh, playing, you know, drums when I was 10 years old. I've been playing drums for 42 years. So it's been a very long journey. I don't know what to tell any young person because the music business has changed so much that I, it has to be very difficult for new bands. Because there's not much of a record, there's no record companies, yes. there's no infrastructure, so it's, it's got to be, I imagine, very difficult. But the only thing I would tell anybody is, the most important thing is, be serious about what you do, you know, keep yourself together, don't get involved with drugs and drinking and all this stuff, you know, don't, and be, be serious about what you do, and be very focused, and work hard, practice, and be ready, so if an opportunity comes, you're ready to take advantage, that's the most important thing. Be prepared and be ready because you may only get one chance, maybe only two chances. So you better make sure you don't drop the ball, as they say. Don't oh, yeah. blow this. Okay, just the last two, two questions is, what kind of music are you listening in this period? I listen to all kinds of music. I, I, on my iPod, I have mostly all the records. Lately, I've been listening to... Let me see, what have I listened to lately? Uh, Queen. Oh, I always listen to Queen. And I've been listening to Led Zeppelin, Queen, Black Sabbath. I always listen to that. Um, okay. You know, my favorite stuff that I like. Uh, but, but I listen to classical music. You know, I listen to John Mayer. Um, Radiohead. Depends on what I'm in the mood for. I put okay. on what I'm in the mood for. Many times to go to sleep at night, I put on Mozart. I like Mozart because it makes me relax. And uh, so I love, I love classical music. Perfect. The so last look, question is going to be... Two days ago, Ronnie James Dio died. Have you ever met him? Of course, I toured with him. With Alice Cooper and Heaven Hell, we toured together. Uh, toured shows with Dio. Kiss played with Dio. Uh, Paul's the one that told me when he passed away after the show in the Zurich. And they, Paul called me in his dressing room. He, on the, he called me on the radio and said, Eric, uh, Ronnie Dio died. He called me after the show. I just got off the cleaning the makeup, and I went into his room. He said, yeah. He said, he just saw And Paul said to me, you know, that because Paul really liked him, he said, you know, he was a really nice guy, and he was a real gentleman, he was a sweet guy, and he was a really great singer. And, and so last night at the show, Paul said to the audience, you know, let's, you know, remember Ronnie, he was Ronnie a great James guy, Dio. and he got the crowd to cheer, Ronnie, Ronnie. It was really cool, I thought, yes. so nice thing. And, uh, you know, he was friends, look, Ronnie was a nice guy, he was, friend, he was friends to everyone. Um, he was always a very nice, you know, gentle guy. Gentlemen, um, and uh, you know he was a great talent. And I, I mean, my favorite stuff is what I saw Rainbow in 1976 uh, on Rainbow Rising. You know, with Ronnie and Cozy Powell on drums, who was one of my drum heroes. And uh, you know, I always remember this. You know, he was had such a great voice, and um, you know, it's a shame. I just hope all we can do is hope that he didn't suffer too much. Oh, yes. And that I hope he's in a better place because I don't wish this kind of thing on anyone. That's terrible. Yes. I'm just surprised so fast because I thought he was getting better. And all of a sudden, it was a shock. I knew they canceled the shows, heaven and hell. Yeah. But I didn't know he was this bad. That's okay, we're done. Thanks a lot for this.